Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today I'm bringing you another great biology lesson. Today we will be going over Chapter 1, Intro to Biology, Lesson 2, Unifying Themes in Biology. So, as you see, our key concept for today is unifying themes connect concepts from many fields of biology. So it's basically saying everything, inter everything in biology interacts with one another. So all levels of life have systems of related parts. A system is an organized group of interacting parts. A cell is a system of chemical and chemicals and processes. A body is a system including organs that interact. And an ecosystem includes living and non-living things that interact. So these are just examples of systems, which we will see a lot of in biology. So this picture is showing a system of an ecosystem. So look, we can see how everything interacts. The eagle is catching the fish with lips in the pond. So those are all interacting. And this boat is floating on the water. So that's also interacting. So it's just showing how everything's organized and that everything interacts with each other. And that a system is made up of many indiv individual organs or parts. Biologists study many different many different systems. So they study all systems, but mostly including life, because that's what biology is. Structures and functions are related in biology. So structure determines function. If one thing has one structure and another has a different structure, they're going to have different functions. So these are just some examples. Proteins with different structures perform different functions. Heart muscle cells have different structure and function than stomach muscle cells. And different species have different anatomical structures with different functions. So anatomical structures are just like bones or hands, structures that make up your body. So a bat has a wing, so that's its anatomic structure. And humans have hands, so that's our anatomic structure. Since they're different structures, they'll have different functions. We use our hands to grasp things, while bats use their wings to fly. So heart muscle cells obviously do something different than stomach muscle cells. It's because they have different structures. Same with proteins. Organisms must maintain homeostasis to survive in diverse environments. Homeostasis is the maintenance of constant internal conditions. Hopefully you already knew this from middle school. So this is just an example of how someone maintains homeostasis. This girl is playing tennis, so her heart is, has to do extra to maintain homeostasis. So since she's playing, she her internal body temperature is rising, but you need it at a stable temperature. So her body is trying to cool down her, her skin by sweating, which will help her maintain homeostasis. So it's just showing how it maintains homeostasis. If you look at the picture, you'll see where it says it points to sweat gland. And it produces sweat and it comes out through the pore, which e the sweat eventually evaporates, cooling down our body, eventually maintaining homeostasis. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal condition. Homeostasis is usually maintained through negative feedback. Negative feedback systems return a condition to its normal set point. So, negative feedback is like when one once your inter so negative feedback is when something changes or gets higher or lower and then your body senses or gets feedback back from your nerves that says something's off a little and then your body sends something back to fix the problem. So this is an example. Thermoglation maintains a stable body temperature under a variety of condi conditions just as a thermostat regulates a furnace. 
both mechanisms use feedback to keep the temperature within set ranges. So let's say we set the thermostat at 50 degrees Celsius, then it sends a message to the thermostat, and I mean then the thermostat sends a message to the furnace which changes the temperature to 50, and then if the furnace gets too hot or too cold it sends information back to the thermostat as negative feedback, and then the thermostat makes its mind on what to do, either raise or lower the temperature, which sends it back to the fur furnace to change and go back to the set point. Behaviors and adaptions can help maintain homeostasis. So depending on where this animal or organism is living, they'll have certain adaptions that help maintain homeostasis, which is keeping constant internal temperatures or conditions. So since polar bears live in polar, tr polar climates, they should probably have a certain adaption that helps them keep the same like warmth inside their body. Their adaption is their fur. Their fur is hollow in the inside, causing it to keep in their body heat more efficiently, which helps maintain homeostasis. And animals in different parts of the world will have different adaptions. So most animals near the equator will have thinner fur because they don't need as much heat. They need to get it out. Evolution explains the unity and diversity of life. Evolution is a change in living things over time. So the genetic makeup of the population of species is actually changed over time through evolu evolution. Evolution can occur through natural selection of adaptation. Adaptions are beneficial beneficially inherited traits that are passed to future generations. So of evolution happens through natural selection, which is nature basically naturally selecting certain adaptations or animals to live on. So we'll use giraffes as an example. Long back ago, all giraffes had short necks, but very few have long necks. The long neck giraffes could reach the taller leaves in the tree therefore surviving, and all the lower, the shorter giraffes would die off, leaving only the long-headed giraffes left, so they get to pass on their genetic makeup to, off to their offsprings, and eventually over millions of millions of years, all giraffes had long necks, and the genetic makeup eventually changed. So the long neck was the beneficial inherited trait that passed on. So this is another example. If if you look on the picture on the right, that bug looks like a thorn, which it took many, many millions of years to adapt into that way. Evolution accounts for both the diversity and the unity of life. So evolution causes species to change and form into different looking creatures, so which would cause diversity. So. Let's, for an example, dolphins near Asia would look different than dolphins near Florida because they live in different temperature waters and they would have to adapt differently to their environments. So this is the end to today's video, which was Chapter 1, Lesson 2, Unifying Themes in Biology. And hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. Our next video will be on Chapter 1, Intro to Biology, Lesson 3, Scientific think Thinking and Processes. That will be the last video in Chapter 1. So stay tuned and watch the next video.